What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Damn, this shit is strong. You know, this shit be having my, my, my heartburn acting up when I drink this. But anyway, happy Friday, everybody. Hope you all are having a great day. Um, For everybody out there, for all the men out there, you have to have this. This right here. Best thing in the world to have. You know how many women I walk up to, you know, that walk up to me and, you know, they just not smell me, but, you know, this has a lingering scent to it that they can smell it literally like five feet away. So they come up to me and ask me what I use because they was like, you know, you smell so good and stuff all the time. So this is what I use. I love Bod spray. Bod is like the best spray. I love it. Shout out to Bod. I've been using this shit for years. Years. Um, so anyway. Getting into this episode. It, it was a decent episode. It wasn't bad. Okay, it was a little, you know. What's the word? I'm not trying to say boring, but it was, you know. Oh, Alright, it was boring for my taste. You know, I was expecting a little bit more action but whatever you know we can't get that every day <laughs> sadly but before i get into this video let me just say this real quick so soap opera digest soap opera digest sent out something in their magazine that said kevin and laura was going to have a christmas surprise at their wedding the rumor was the surprise was going to be kevin is the traitor that's the rumor. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He's a doctor. He could pull it off, <laughs> which is true. He could pull it off. But I don't think it's him. He's not the traitor. I think the surprise is Laura's mother, Leslie, because I did hear she is coming back to the show around Christmas time. So I believe she's the surprise because we haven't seen Leslie in four years. Last time we seen Leslie, I believe, was in 2013. So... I think she's the surprise. I don't think Kevin is the traitor. I doubt it. I hope not. Because if they make him the traitor, that's just ruining a perfectly good character. Because once you make him an evil person behind a vicious plot, you, there's no coming. There's no redeem. There's no re redemption for that. There's 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 none. So, and I don't want to see a good relationship get ruined by evilness. Because Kevin and Laura is like one of the best relationships, if not the best relationship on this show. I actually love their relationship. It's mature, it's older, it's wise. I like it. There's no games played with the two of them, and I like that. Especially when you got so many other disastrous couples on this show that keep us entertained for the most part. We don't need them to, you know, to join the fray. So I like their relationship how it is. Um so anyway, um if you if you haven't read the interview between Chris Van Eaton and Michael Fairman on MichaelFairmanSoaps.com, read the interview. I think you'll like the interview. I enjoyed the interview. Some of the stuff that Chris Van Eaton said that's coming up is Cassandra. A lot of people are going to be intertwined in this drug storyline. They said a lot of people will be in danger because of Cassandra. Sam is going to be going through a lot of changes, ups and downs, you know, a lot of challenges. My guess is with the Sam and I mean the Jason and Drew situation, um, Julian and Alexis, he said, you know, he don't know for sure if they're getting back together, but he did say Alexis is going to basically make Julian work to get her back. So he's in for a fight. Um, it's just a lot of other stuff, you know, Ava and Griffin, you know, they're going to go through some, a little bit of, you know, this and that, but, um, yeah. So we're going to be seeing a lot coming up. It's going to be a lot. Um, a lot of drama coming up. A lot of relationships will be tested. Um, so anyway, getting into this episode. It is almost 2018, right? And I'm trying to be a better me. You know what I mean? I really am. I'm trying to be a better me. And I can't believe I'm about to say this. But I think for 2018... I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm being real. I'm going to try to give Franco 
a chance. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. Just a little bit. I'm going to try. Um, I didn't really care today for his conversation with Kiki. But Kiki did basically tell him, you know, be honest with Elizabeth. Because it's time that he be honest with her. Because if you're going to marry her, and it's obvious that this whole secret that he's keeping is eating him up. It's quite obvious. Even, you know, when he went to go see Andre the other day, Andre told him, tell her the truth. Just tell her. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't tell her and you wait to marry her, it's going to make her feel like you trapped her into marriage. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not telling her the truth about something because you're afraid. That's how I feel. Franco might as well just tell her the truth. And I think on Monday's episode, we're going to get that truth. You know, he's finally going to tell her. Because I felt like, you know, just tell her and let her make up her mind if she still want to even marry you. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be honest. You don't want to start a new marriage off with a lie. You know, because that's definitely going to put a dent into it. Because I'm telling you, she, Elizabeth is quick. She'll file an annulment on you like that. So, uh, you might just want to, you know, shame the devil and tell her the truth. What you got to lose? <laughs> Except her. <laughs> but, I mean, come on. Like, yeah, it's a big secret. But, I mean, she might forgive you. You know, some people just might surprise you with their responses. So, just tell her the truth. Um. So, anyway. I, I, I read a few of the comments yesterday where people said Sam seemed, you know, detached from Jason or whatever and how he feel about things. I can understand why she's detached, you know, because I think she's doing it kind of on purpose, detaching herself from him because she don't want to give off the vibe that she's still in love with Jason. And she, I think she's trying to prove to Jason overall. I think she's trying to prove to herself that she's where she wants to be in her life. As far as her and Drew, I think she keeps trying to prove that to herself. But she knows she can't keep fighting the truth. And it's okay for her to say she's in love with both men because they're different. You know, for a minute, she thought that he was Jason. So, you know, she was in love with the thought of him being Jason. But now that she has the real Jason back, it's a conflict for her, a major one. But there's a difference. There's, there's differences in Drew and Jason. You know, Drew is the safe choice, you know. He keeps her safe. She's domestic. You know, she's domesticated now. They have this normal life. And this is a normal life that she's never had. Sam has never lived a normal life. She used to be a con artist. She was a private investigator. So she's been around danger. She was married to a mobster. She's been around danger and adventure pretty much all her life. She's never really known a normal life. And now she has that. And she, I think a big part of her likes that normalcy. She likes it. She likes that life. But your feelings for somebody don't change. Her and Jason have been through shit off and on over the years. And that just don't go away in a blink with a blink of an eye. You know, it just don't go away. So I think she's battling herself on what she really wants. You know, does she want to go back to that old life? Does she want to stay with this new life that she created? You know, but at the end of the day, whatever decision she makes, she has to think about what's best for the kids. You know what I'm saying? The kids come first at this point. Her feelings are second compared to the kids because you have to think about what your kids need. And her kids need a normal life. Her kids need stability. They don't need danger in their life. You know what I mean? So it, it boils down to what's best for the children at the end of the day. Because that's what she has to think about now. She's a mother. I feel like if she didn't have kids, it would probably been an easy choice for her. Maybe not as easy. It still would have been a tough choice. But it would have been made things a little bit less complicated than what they are now. Because now she has the kids to think about. Not just herself and Jason and Drew. She got these kids. So it's a lot to think about. But I think she's detaching herself because she just don't know what she want at this point. She thinks she does. But in her heart, she still don't freaking know. In her mind, she thinks she got it made up. But her heart, 
it ain't made up. The heart wants what the heart wants. So at the end of the day, she's still gonna have to think long and hard. Um, in my opinion, some people saying that she need to make the right decision and go back to Jason. In my opinion, there is no right or wrong decision here. There's really not. You got two men that love her and she loves both of them. So there's really no right or wrong here. Whatever you decide is what you decide. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it is what it is at this point. But um, I'm not going to be mad at whatever decision she makes because that's the, you know, what your heart wants. You know, you got to follow your heart at the end of the day. So whatever she chooses, if she chooses to stay with, with Drew, cool, good for her. Jason, cool, good for her. Either way, you know, it's what you want. You know, it's what's best for you. It's what's best for your kids. That's what comes first. You know, you got to think about what's best for everybody involved. Um, but anyway, Alexis was with Drew. She basically told him everything in his life is null and void, basically. Everything. He told her about Oscar and stuff like that, about the quarter main trust and all that. And Oscar is basically going to be added to the quarter main trust. Um, here's what I have an issue with. Edward's will. This is what I have an issue with. I thought that his will stated everybody inherits you know, his grandchildren and great grandchildren will inherit ELQ stock, his living great grandchildren and grandchildren. But I thought that will meant at the time of his death, they all inherit. So you mean to tell me five years later, all these quarter mains come back from the dead, all these new quarter mains pop up? You mean to tell me they all inherit? then that would mean that any quarter main that's born gets ELQ stock automatically because of that will. So that's why I thought that the, the will meant at the time of his death. So AJ, Ned, Dylan, Maya, Danny, Lila Ray, all those people who were alive at the time, Michael at the time of his death inherited. But you mean to tell me afterwards people can come from the woodwork, be quarter mains, and they automatically get 6% of the company? That shouldn't be right. I think that that will need to be changed <laughs> because that means that every new quarter main that comes into the family, they're going to have to redistribute the shares again. That's crazy. So that means if Michael have this baby with Nell, that baby automatically inherits? That would be nuts, first of all. That would be insane. That would be insanity. So Oscar automatically inherits EOQ stock. It's freaking crazy. But um, hopefully that's not the way it's set up. Hopefully. Um, I feel bad for everybody involved in this. I really do. I feel bad for Drew. I feel bad for Jason. I feel bad for Sam. They all got a long road ahead of them, you know, but Alexis basically just told them, like, you know, we just legally got to figure everything out. But I feel in my gut, I feel like Jason will give him the company because Jason, like I said, Jason do not care about that media company. Jason don't care about that penthouse. I think he will let him have the, the media company and he'll let him have the penthouse more than likely because he don't care about that stuff. You know, those are just things they, you know, in the media company, he would have never bought anyway. The penthouse can be replaced. He can get a new place. You know, it's not hard. Um, So hopefully, you know, they just hash it out peacefully. Alexis is starting to get on my nerves. It's obvious that she's biased and she wants Drew with Sam, obviously, because he's a safer choice. He's good for her daughter. You know, he's safe and all that. And I understand that she's just addressing, you know, giving her opinion, but you've already gave your opinion. We don't need to hear it again and again and again and again and again and again. We already know what you want. So it's not about you. Shut up, Alexis. <laughs> you just handle your life. Um. So anyway, Julian is free. You know, actually, before I get to that, let me just say this. Sam and Drew were in the office or whatever. He told her that they're not legally married. She kind of looked surprised about it. I don't understand why. I'm looking at Sam like, why are you surprised that y'all not legally married? Hello. You divorced him and married and remarried him when his name was Jason Morgan. It's illegal. It's invalidated. So therefore, you're going to have to divorce the real Jason and marry Drew. 
the question is, will she? That's the big question. Will she or won't she? Which way will you go? So anyway, Julian is a free man. The, di the district attorney decided to drop all charges against him. And he's a free man. No more ankle monitor. He's free. All charges dropped. You could tell Jordan was pissed about it because she told him basically this second chance on life that you have, you better do it up right. Because as soon as you slip up, she says she can't wait to send him back to Pettenville. So you better make it count. Um. So he's at Charlie's bar on Char Charles Street or whatever. I mean, Charlie's pub or whatever, some new bar or whatever. I guess it's a bar that's been around for a minute, but we never seen it. This is the first time we're seeing it. Um, him and Scott were sitting here signing paperwork. And of course, the paperwork that he was signing was ownership papers. He just bought Charlie's Pub on Charles Street. What is so major about Charles Street? Because I heard in the spoilers that Charles Street is about to be a, a big storyline coming up for Charles Street. What is so big about Charles Street? Dr. Bench keeps talking about Charles Street. Laura mentioned Charles Street a couple times. Ned mentioned Charles Street. What is so big about Charles Street? Now Julian bought a pub on Charles Street. What is big about Charles Street? Is it the, I think it's the waterfront. It's around the waterfront area, you know, which is huge in mob activity. I think that's Sonny's territory or whatever, I think. Um, but I don't know. Something major about to go down because they keep mentioning Charles Street. But um, Alexis shows up at the pub. She keeps thinking that Julian is following her. He got some type of low jack on her. But he had to explain to her that he just bought the bar. I, I don't blame, you know, him for buying that bar because think about it. This is the first time we're seeing that set. So we already know people don't really go to that place that we normally see on this show. Alexis, Sonny, they don't frequent that place. They always go to the floating rig. So I can understand why he would buy that place because he didn't really expect to see people like Alexis or anybody that hates his guts or dislike him in that pub. Because they always go to the floating rib. So I can understand why he bought it. You know, that way he ain't really got to run into nobody that don't like him and he don't like. Um, but I guess that's about to be one of the new hot spots or whatever. I hope Char uh, Charlie's Pub don't replace the floating rib. Because that's a staple on this show. When it used to be Jake's. But it's a staple. Um, What do you all think about Charlie's Pub? Do you like it? Yay or nay? Um... I'm happy for Julian. He got this new lease on life. He bought a new bar. I hope that, you know, he just stays off the mob because the mob is definitely not for Julian. It doesn't suit him. So, you know, I just hope that he steer clear of that, that lifestyle. And I hope that him and Alexis get back together. Of course, it's obvious that Alexis is going to play hard to get because she, she is hard to get. She's self-made. Um, and I don't blame her. You know, dude held a knife to your throat. His crazy sister tried to kill you and your daughter. I make you work for it, too. I'm serious. Let a woman try to play me out like that. I probably would never get back with a chick like that, to be quite honest. Chick tried to kill me. Okay. You would be in Pettenville the rest of your life. I see to it. <laughs> but uh, I kind of do hope they get back together. The chemistry is still there. But, um, anyway, so Jason had to go see Andre or whatever, because he needed to know if Andre still has, um, Drew's original memory. Andre said that he destroyed everything, but he does have a backup and he hid the backup in one of the, um, Christmas ornaments that Anna Devane has. And she don't even know that she has it. So it looks like. Jason's going to have to race over there to try to go get it before she do something with it. Um, speaking of Anna, I like her and Finn. I really do. I, I like her and Finn together. I think they make a nice looking couple. Um, how do you all feel about Anna and Finn? I, I, th I think they look good. I like the chemistry between the two of them. And she said something about them gingerbread men or whatever that he chewed the head off of because he was eat one of those. I love gingerbread men. I haven't had a gingerbread man in so daggone long, but I love them. They taste so good, like, especially when you take them out the oven, they are so blazing. But, um, 
I think she said one of those gingerbread men was expensive or something. I said expensive. Damn, how much you pay for a cookie? She said it was expensive. I was like, how could a gingerbread cookie be expensive? Are they made? Do they got diamonds hidden in them or something? I don't know, but <laughs> I love them together. Like I think that they could be antagonistic towards each other. Like they got that fun type of relationship. But it's obvious that she's not trying to tell Robin or nobody about her feelings for Finn or whatever because Anna's the type of person, she's not really the express herself type person. You know, she tries to be this strong WSB agent. You know, she's not really a feelings type person like that. She doesn't like to feel vulnerable, basically. And I could tell that Finn is digging her. She digging him. Um, And I'm looking forward to seeing where this whole thing go. You know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But um, anyway, let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know. Now, see you all Monday. It's about to snow again tonight. So, and I'm not looking for, I'm not shoveling nothing. I'm just putting it out there. I ain't shoveling jack. But anyway, I hope all you have a great weekend. I will see you all Monday. Have a fabulous weekend. Peace.